and welcome back to the last segment of the Dofer A196 Experiments with the Phase Lock Loop series. I am Raul. This is Raul's World of Sense. Today we're going to be looking at one more patch uh, that can be kind of created with the A196 and then just kind of wrapping up the series uh, that we've been going through for several weeks now. Um, at any rate, if you have not seen any of the previous videos, I do encourage you to go back and watch some of those just to get an idea, because right now you're kind of coming in if you're new um, on the tail end of it. Uh, but we are going to talk about something new this time. Um, in the beginning there, you saw a patch that I kind of threw together, uh, my own little recipe for the A196 phase lock loop. We're going to be breaking down that patch and uh, going into what parts of it do what? Um, so I have kind of a layout here for this patch, and we're just going to kind of jump right in, and then we're going to talk about the phase lock loop for one last time. So let's go ahead and get started with the patch. I'm going to actually start, uh, let me think how I want to do this, because it's a pretty complex patch, as, as you saw in the intro. I'm going to actually start from the right side over here, and I'm going to work my way left over to my MIDI interface. So I have a few patch cables, and I'm going to go audio out from my VCA into input number four right there. Uh, let's see what else I got. I got input three going into the high pass output from my A121. I got input number two going out of my notch, my multi-mode. I then have a input number one from here. It's actually coming from X, Y out over here. And that's patched. Now let's look at the next module here, the A131. I actually have a fairly long cable, so I need one of those. Um, we're gonna be taking the CD1 input right there, going over to the A140 over here. And let's see, I guess I had it in the lower output. Hope, that, hope that's right, but uh, if you remember back in the A140 series, these two outputs are identical for the most part. Um, okay, so we're going to keep on going. Got audio in number one right here. It is actually going over to the second malt. Yeah, that's right. So there we go. And then audio in number two. If I patch that actually going back up, and it's the third one down. I actually have a diagram up here that I'm working off of, in case you're wondering. Uh, let's see, audio in of my multi-mode filter, taking it in from there, and it's actually just a sine wave from my A110. And we can hear that. And then I got the square wave, or the pulse wave, going out from here, and actually going into the multiple here. So that signal is actually what's going to be multiplied here and is actually going all the way over to my VCA in input number one. But the second multiple from that lower one, uh, let's see, that one is actually going to, actually it was the other way around. It's one down from there, and then this one actually goes right there into my phase comparator, so I get a little light to let me know that I have some signal going in there. Um, I did miss one cable in my phase lock loop. I had a out from this section up to the top multiple. There we go. So this is actually going up and then going out here over to audio in number two. But I also have multiple of that phase lock loop signal out right there going down and over into the Y end of my ring mod there we go and then let's see I also have a saw wave coming out from here and then that saw wave is just going straight into my X in of my ring mod there we go Let's see what else do we have. I also had an output from here, my A140, 
going into the pulse width CV to kind of create some interest because if you remember from the A196 videos, the pulse wave is actually what's being tracked in the A196. So I thought, why not give it a little bit of change to kind of lively it up. Okay. Uh, then I also have my control voltage signal over here for my A190 patching into my slew limiter. There we go. And then I have the output of that slew limiter. And that's so the notes are going to slide from one note to the next. I patch it straight into my oscillator over here. Let me actually do CB2, something different than what we were looking at. And then that is the basic patch right there. It doesn't sound very interesting, but uh, I'm not sending notes over here yet to my A190. Um, so let me get my sequence ready out here, and here we go. Keep your eye on the A190. You should see some activity on the lights. And there we go. Oh, not yet. There we go. So that's the basic patch right there. Doesn't quite sound the same, so I might have to do a little bit of tweaking here. Make sure all my cables are all the way in. There we go. Go back through and check everything. So for the most part, that is kind of the patch that we were working with. But originally I think I had it in Phase Comparator 2. Yeah, there we go. And I had been playing with the offset a little bit. But you can see now that the sometimes the modular can be very temp temperamental. You can have one patch for one moment, have it set up, and then when you repatch everything, you might have to readjust things to kind of get it back in that similar uh, place. At any rate, uh, let's talk about what's going on here, because there is kind of a complex sort of segment here. Uh, I'm going to actually do it by looking at what's going in the inputs over here of our mixer. So I'm going to turn down number four. Turn down number three, turn down number two, and let's just actually listen to them one at a time. So right now, we're actually listening to only the rig mod signal. And that's what we have right there. If I change the octave of this, I'll get a slightly different rig mod sound. That's kind of interesting right there. So I just kind of adjust that to taste. That's my ring mod signal. And again, if we want to just review a little bit, that's a product of the saw and then also the phase lock loop signal that's being multiplied over here into the YN. So that's what's producing that little kind of chirpy sound. Okay, so that's the ring mod sound. Let's turn that down and then bring up input number two. I believe this is our A121 because it's a pretty straightforward sound. So it's the notch filter from the A121 and then the input from there. So if I adjust the frequency here, you can hear it getting a little more muffled. If I turn the audio level down, I can bring it up full max there. I can adjust cutoff to kind of change the timbre of it a little bit. Or I can adjust a little bit of both. Kind of like that tone right there. So that's our sine wave. 